I Love You, 2000. I Love You was a computer worm that spread through email with the subject line, I Love You, and an attachment named Love Letter for You. VBS. The attachment was a Visual Basic script, which, when opened, executed code on the user's computer. Once activated, it overwrote image files, spread itself to all contacts in the user's Outlook address book, and sent copies of itself automatically. This rapid propagation allowed it to infect millions of computers within hours. The damage was estimated in the billions of dollars, affecting both personal computers and corporate networks worldwide. The worm exploited the trust users had in email attachments and demonstrated the power of social engineering combined with automation. Melissa, 1999. Melissa was a macro virus that targeted Microsoft Word documents. Users received an infected Word file via email, often appearing as an important or work-related document. When the file was opened, a macro embedded in the document executed automatically, sending the virus to the first 50 contacts in the user's email address book. Melissa caused massive email congestion in corporate networks and forced companies to shut down mail servers temporarily. This virus was significant for being one of the first widespread examples of email-based macro viruses and highlighted vulnerabilities in office automation features. Code Red, 2001. Code Red was a worm that targeted Microsoft Internet Information Services IIS web servers running on Windows 2000 and NT. It exploited a buffer overflow vulnerability, allowing attackers to execute arbitrary code remotely. Once a server was infected, the worm defaced web pages with the message hacked by Chinese, and attempted to launch distributed denial of service, distributed denial of service, attacks against the White House website. The infection spread rapidly because it did not require user interaction. Merely running a vulnerable server was enough. Code Red caused major internet disruptions and forced administrators to patch servers and block traffic to slow propagation. My Doom, 2004. MyDoom was an email worm that became the fastest spreading virus at its time. It arrived as an email attachment with a deceptive message, prompting recipients to open it. Once executed, it installed itself on the system, sent copies to addresses found on the infected machine, and opened back doors for attackers. MyDoom also included a payload to launch DDoS attacks against specific websites, which it executed according to a schedule. Its high infection rate overwhelmed networks and caused global internet slowdowns, affecting millions of users. Conficker, 2008. Conficker, also known as Downadup, exploited vulnerabilities in Windows to spread without user intervention. It created a massive botnet by connecting infected machines to a command and control network. Conficker could disable security services, block access to antivirus updates, and download additional malicious software. Its ability to mutate and use multiple propagation techniques, such as network shares, removable drives, and weak passwords, made it extremely difficult to eradicate. At its peak, Conficker infected millions of computers worldwide, posing significant risks to businesses and governments. Stuxnet, 2010. Stuxnet was a highly sophisticated malware designed specifically as a cyber weapon. It targeted industrial control systems, particularly Siemens SCADA software used in nuclear facilities. Unlike typical viruses, Stuxnet was engineered to manipulate physical machinery. It caused centrifuges in Iran's nuclear program to spin at unsafe speeds while reporting normal operation to monitoring systems. The worm spread via infected USB drives and network shares, exploiting multiple zero-day vulnerabilities in Windows. Stuxnet was significant for being the first known malware specifically designed to cause physical damage, blending espionage, sabotage, and extreme technical complexity. WannaCry, 2017. WannaCry was a ransomware outbreak that affected hundreds of thousands of computers across more than 150 countries. It encrypted files on infected machines and demanded Bitcoin payments for their release. The worm spread using Eternal Blue an exploit of a vulnerability in Microsoft's server message block SMB protocol. Organizations that had not applied the security update were highly vulnerable. 
The outbreak disrupted hospitals, businesses, and government operations, including the UK's National Health Service, causing delays in medical services. WannaCry highlighted the dangers of unpatched systems and the rapid global impact ransomware can have. Not Petia, 2017. Not Petia initially appeared as ransomware, but was actually a destructive malware variant designed to permanently damage computers. It spread through compromised accounting software updates and used multiple Windows exploits, including Eternal Blue. Once infected, NotPetya encrypted the master file table, rendering systems inoperable. Companies worldwide reported billions in losses, as NotPetya spread rapidly across corporate networks and supply chains. Its attack demonstrated how malware could masquerade as financial extortion while having purely destructive intentions. Sasser, 2004. Sasser was a worm that targeted a vulnerability in Microsoft's local security authority subsystem service, LSASS. Unlike email-based worms, Sasser spread automatically over networks without requiring user action. Once a computer was infected, the worm caused the system to crash and reboot repeatedly, disrupting operations. It propagated rapidly, affecting computers in corporations, airports, and hospitals. Sasser highlighted the dangers of network-based worms exploiting unpatched operating system vulnerabilities. Zeus, 2007. Zeus, also known as ZBot, was a Trojan primarily used for stealing banking credentials. It infected computers via malicious email attachments or drive-by downloads and operated silently in the background. Once installed, Zeus could capture keystrokes, harvest login information, and send it to remote servers controlled by attackers. Zeus evolved into a toolkit sold on underground markets, allowing cybercriminals to launch customized banking attacks. Its widespread use over several years made it one of the most notorious financial malware threats in history. Klez, 2001-2002 Klez was a mass mailing worm that spread through email, often disguising itself as harmless messages or replies from trusted contacts. It could infect systems via Outlook vulnerabilities and, in some variants, delete files or disable antivirus software. Klez's polymorphic nature allowed it to mutate its code with each infection, making detection difficult. It caused widespread disruption in corporate networks and highlighted the need for improved email security. Storm Worm, 2007. Stormworm was a Trojan that spread primarily via email with sensationalist subject lines like 230 dead as storm batters Europe. Once opened, it installed backdoors, connecting infected computers into a botnet. The botnet could perform distributed denial-of-service attacks, send spam, or propagate additional malware. Its decentralized command structure made it resilient and extremely difficult to dismantle representing an evolution in large-scale botnet management. Blaster, 2003. Blaster, also known as Lovesan, exploited a vulnerability in Windows XP and 2000's DCOM RPC service. The worm caused infected computers to crash and reboot repeatedly and included a payload that attempted to launch DDoS attacks against Microsoft's website. Blaster spread automatically over networks, emphasizing the risks of unpatched systems and the speed at which a worm could propagate. CIH 1998, a.k.a. Chernobyl virus. CIH was a file-infecting virus notable for its destructive payload. It infected executable files on Windows 95, 98, and ME systems, and on a trigger date, it could overwrite the system BIOS, rendering the computer unbootable. CIH demonstrated the potential for malware to go beyond simple file corruption, targeting hardware-level components, which was a new level of threat at the time. The one on screen? Worth a look, if you like knowing what most people don't.